Now, there's an interesting relationship here between JSON and JSON RPC, because although we've said that JSON is a building block for JSON RPC, JSON RPC is actually, in some ways, a subset of JSON. Not every JSON message is a valid JSON RPC message, because if you send a JSON object to a JSON RPC endpoint, and that object isn't one of the three allowed message types, the endpoint won't know what to do with that message. What the endpoint does when it receives a message it doesn't know how to handle is up to that endpoint. So from a reliability standpoint, you're far better off if you can build your endpoint so that it already has well-defined rules for how it should handle any message it receives, decide whether that message was valid, and decide what to do with valid messages. Otherwise, you'll be stuck debugging and refactoring every time your endpoint encounters a message it doesn't know how to handle, and eventually end up with a maintenance nightmare. Our goal here is to keep that from ever happening. So we know that not all JSON is JSON RPC, but it's also the case that JSON RPC can embed any JSON. How do we know that? Because that's what the specification says. A JSON RPC request is a JSON object with three parameters, method, params, and ID. The ID can be any JSON type, the method is a JSON string, and the params are an array of JSON objects, and those can be anything that JSON can represent. So our full JSON RPC system is going to have to keep careful track of what state its pieces are in. An endpoint needs to keep track of, its, of if it's deciding whether to accept a request to execute a procedure call, or whether an argument to a procedure call is valid or not. Fortunately, organizing our code in terms of the languages our system uses to communicate, JSON, JSON RPC, and HTTP POST, makes it really easy to reason about how we're using those languages together. Now let's take a look at a real-world example of some code that wasn't organized this way and fell victim to a serious vulnerability, a remote root exploit in the Samba web administration tool that, it, that originated in the improper handling of Base64 encoded data. There was a related vulnerability that only produced a crash, and it's probably the simplest example you can imagine of how just one character's worth of unexpected input can ruin your whole day.